Okay, so story time. Let me tell you how the confused African came about. So the confused African is actually a web series that it was always supposed to be a web series, but I actually started shooting it as I was shooting the Pearl of Africa. So the Pearl of Africa, if you haven't seen it already, it's uh, up on Netflix. It's a film about a Ugandan trans woman. And while I was shooting that film, I came up with an idea that I wanted to create a cross-media project so that I could engage an audience long before the film came out and, and all that. Uh, but the thing that happened was that it was very difficult to, uh, to kind of fund the whole project in terms of anything else than the film. So eventually we just decided that, okay, we're gonna do a web series. That's gonna be the Pearl of Africa, the web series about Cleo, who's the main protagonist in the feature film. But in the original ID, there was five activists and one of them was Ken, who's in The Confused African. So he actually is a friend of mine that I known since uh, he lived in Sweden. So he uh, was actually the first person that I made anything with after film school. So I got out of film school and kind of the weeks when we were working on our uh, exam film, uh, examination film, uh, the final project that we did before we left the film school, he came up to us as we were shooting it in the school and was just like, oh yeah, do you guys want to shoot a music video, blah, blah, blah. I decided that I would DOP that one. A friend of mine directed the thing and we actually started working together. And I've known him since then. I knew his kids when they were really small. There was they were in the music videos and, and all that. So I've known him since probably like 15 years or something. And then when I was shooting The Pearl of Africa, I, by coincidence, I just like reached out to him and see, see if, you know, he was in Uganda. And he hadn't been there for, you know, many, many years. And he used to go back sometimes, but he didn't live there. And all of a sudden, this coincidence happened. I went back there to shoot my film, and he had just moved back, just a couple of months earlier. So he was struggling to get into, you know, how to uh, adapt to coming back to his motherland, uh, Uganda, having lived in both Sweden for many, many years, and then the US, uh, especially in Atlanta. So he was struggling to kind of adapt to a new way of living and earning less money and all those things. Uh, and he was living at home with his parents, uh, having you know lived by himself since he was probably like 16 or something. In Sweden, he had had a long career, like he did music videos, uh, or like he did A and R work, I think, for artists in the 90s. So I actually. You know, when you listen to Eurodisco, maybe not everybody did, but I listened to Eurodisco during a more shameful period of my music uh, listening time. And one of the tracks that was really popular was Pandora Trust Me. And by coincidence, he's actually the black guy rapping on that song. So he was one of the guys, there was not a lot of them, there was a couple of guys in Sweden that was rapping on a lot of Eurodisco songs. Ken was one of those. He was also uh, a a &R, uh, at that time, I think. Uh, so he was signing artists and working with artists on a label. Uh, but he was also in this uh, own R&B group that he had called Swahili Nation. Yeah, first he was a solo artist, then he was you know, introduced to them and they started working together. And that's the band that I did music videos for, Swahili Nation. Yeah, so that's basically how I got to know Uganda. So this whole web series is partly uh, maybe an explanation of why I made a film about Uganda and a trans woman. Because I was uh, introduced into the Ugandan society and, and everything through Ken and, and his family and all that. And uh, I guess seeing how homophobic uh, a lot of people from Uganda are, that also got me interested in that topic. And that's why I started exploring that topic in uh, the Pearl of Africa. 
But then this project is something totally opposite, which is about a uh, Ugandan moving back to Uganda, having lived outside for, I guess, 25 years, most of his life, pretty much. 25, 30 years, maybe. So he's you know, having to adapt to a new way of living, having to adapt to moving home with your parents. There's a lot of stuff that you don't want to do, maybe, when you're, I think, 38 or something, whatever he is. So that's what the film background pretty much is but then once we started filming I realized that he was interesting like when I came there I didn't have an intention to shoot him I was actually intending to shoot other activists but then as I got to know like his struggle coming back to Uganda and how personally difficult it was to kind of adapt to living in a foreign country, basically, that you haven't lived in since you were like 15 or 16. You know, he moved from Uganda to Kenya first because they fled the war, and then they came back to Uganda uh, when uh, the, the war was over, but he went on to move to Sweden then. So his formative years was basically in Sweden. So he grew up in Sweden, was born in Uganda, also was uh, grown up in Nairobi in Kenya, but then his adult years he spent a lot of them in Atlanta. So it's kind of you know a mix of having lived everywhere and being a nomad and that's pretty much what the series is about. It's about somebody that is struggling to understand themselves and their identity uh, in a place where you know they haven't been for a long, long time, uh, and at least haven't been on a deeper level. They haven't lived there and earned a living and had a career and all those things. Uh, so that's kind of interesting, I thought, when I came there. But the intent was to make a film about different activists. And then as I got to know his struggle, it became more and more interesting to me. But the difficult thing was to make this into something that you could understand, because his story is why do you have so much struggle to focus c300 as i say never use autofocus <laughs> 